Well, hello everyone. Let me just make sure I am on. I think I'm on. The chat is here. Hold on just a second. Um, just wait, I'm a couple minutes early, so I'm just gonna wait here for just a minute until it's actually time. I just wanted to make sure this time there's no glitch. Last time I did, did a live training, we had these tech problems and like we i had to end up using a different a different uh tool actually okay i'm on the right network that seems all to be working hold on just a sec let me actually make sure i'm just gonna ask my team to confirm So, well, hello, everyone. Just one more minute until everyone comes in and um, everything should work. I am doing great. Thank you so much. Official channel. I I am sorry. I don't think I can say your name. al Karay al murza Mohamed al -Tay. I'm just going to call you Mohamed. <laughs> Welcome and welcome, Christine. Let me know where you're all from before we jump in. There's so much to cover today. I am going to try to get all the teaching in in 30 minutes, which is going to be a challenge. There's so much I can literally talk about. And um, this is actually for Sopranos. However, you know, it's just everyone can benefit. everyone can benefit from this because the principles ring true for all voice type so for all voice types okay uh let me know real quick where you're from let me check if i have this option here to actually see all the because hmm, i'm actually streaming to one uh, other platform and actually let me change my settings for my audio because there will be singing and um i'm using zoom to stream here but uh zoom has this built-in noise cancellation you can turn that off and i just turned it off so that when i do sing it doesn't cut me off otherwise it, you know when you hold a pitch for longer than a couple seconds it'll just mute you out because it thinks it's a background noise or something all righty well I'll just get started and then um, Iraq. Oh, how cool. From Hong Kong. Hi, Nora. Awesome. Awesome, awesome. It's been a while since I've done a live stream here and I am just so excited. Let me just open up by saying if you are interested in singing opera, I am starting an opera workshop, one month long workshop that is intensive. It's one on one as well as a small group setting. I work with you one on one as well as you get the lessons and, and the motivation from the little group. It's a very small group, just a handful of people. Um, it starts next Monday. If you want to want to check out more information about that workshop for Sopranos specifically this coming month, I don't do these opera workshops often. I did it once in April this year and um, this time I don't know when I'm going to offer it again. Hi, Lena from Singapore. You can go to bit.ly slash um, opera class and you can find all the information about the one month of opera class that I'm going to be teaching starting next Monday. All right, I will get started. There's so much to cover. I'll do a little bit of screen sharing here in just a little bit. So, you know, the, the number one problem that I hear oftentimes, and I'm not going to look at the chat right now. I will look at the chat after I get through teaching and then I will answer your questions. Okay, sound good? The one, number one complaint and the number one problem that I hear from Sopranos, of course, when you think of a soprano, you think of, well, singing high, right? That's kind of the trademark of a soprano voice, singing high in your voice. And that is the difficulty for a lot of sopranos is how do I sing higher without straining? Because here's what happens. It's okay up to a certain point, 
and then the strain begins and it gets tight and it gets tense and then the top pitch it it's it barely comes out and some have said something like i sound like a dying cat or i sound like a, a screeching car or something like that and I'm going to go over the reasons why that is and how you can fix that, how you can extend your range to the top, toward the top and sound good. Let me preface this. Also, one of the main problems I see that is keeping sopranos back from actually singing higher and singing with more beauty is artificial darkening and making it heavy. I see this a lot. Here, here's what happens. It's a quick, easy fix, but it's a cheat fix is when you just darken the voice. So my soprano voice, I have a lighter, brighter voice. So when I sing, it's more like It's higher than it is normally, but um, here's, here's the problem when I darken. Um, now I used my voice in a way that I tried to create open sound and bright overtones. Now the bright overtones only come out when I don't cover up the sound, when I don't darken it. When I make it very heavy and artificial and I lower the larynx and I do something like this. <laughs> little bit exaggerating now <laughs> but you see what happens is that it sounds very strained and pushed and it's because I'm not adding bright overtones now here's a little um, lesson in physics actually the sound waves so your vocal cords they vibrate and it creates a frequency which you perceive as the main pitch now there's a lot you can add to that. You can either just add, you know, just that main raw pitch, but what you want to do is add character. In order to add more character, you want to add overtones. Now those are secondary, tertiary, and like all these different <laughs> additional frequencies that you would not perceive as the main pitch. But um, this is actually the principle of overtone singing because there are always some overtones that actually, it's, it's a different pitch. Yeah, it's usually like um, a fourth, a fifth, or an octave. Those vibrate along. Those are natural relationships between frequencies. You can look it up also in the universe. This is kind of nat you know, natural laws that these are a lot of the relations, um, the, f the ratios, that's what I wanted to say, the ratios is like the fourth, the fifth, and the octave. Um, that's why also a piano tuner, a professional one, they will not, they will only use the tuning, mm, the tuner for one single pitch, and then everything else they will listen to doing intervals, you know, because you hear that overlap of overtones and that vibration, that kind of overlap it's not just a hearing, it's a, it's a feeling, but I'm not going to go into that. Oh my goodness. I wanted to do it in 30 minutes. If I do like, if I go that much in depth, there's no way I'm going to get through. Just suffice it to say the bright overtones are important in order to do that. When you cover, it's basically you're cutting off the sound waves right here. So don't darken artificially. And in order to not darken, you want to fix your vowels. The first vowel I always start with is the open ah, and really close to that, that another good one to start with is an ah, like an open ah. There's an o, which is a closed o, and then an open ah. Don't sing an ah when you're mean an ah, and that's what I hear a lot. So like, don't say oh. So it's all Maria. So everything was just basically darkened, and that is not the pure vowel, and that does not create openness. So that is squared away. That is a huge topic, and that is pretty much that tweaking of the vowels, and that's what we call placement. That is something every classical singer is going to work on for the rest of their lives, really. It's always tweaking slight differences, slight tweaks in placement in the shape of the vowel will have a huge result it would just 
have such a different outcome if you just tweak it a little bit. But let's start in the beginning. Okay, I just wanted to kind of give you an overview what we're going to this is the ultimate point that we're going to get to here. This is the main thing. In order to even sing any frequency, you need to fix your posture because your posture determines your breathing and your breathing determines how good you can support and so does your posture and that determines how much air and how much kind of foundation you have for a top pitch to get higher. I wanted to share something with you. Hold on just a sec, let me minimize this. And I wanted to share share my screen real quick. This right here. So can everyone see this? There is a graphic right here. And um, you can see the different um, the different postures here. What is important in singing, you can see how the spine is curved differently depending on how, you know, what the, where the center of gravity is. So when you lean forward or you round your back too much, you know, you arch your back. This, you can already see this here in those graphics. You can imagine that this has an effect on the lungs moving and the ribs moving, how they can move, okay? So what you want is an ideal position for rib expansion because of course what is what is nestled inside of the ribs you know like the ribs protect pretty much all of our organs that are you know inside there to where you know if we get hit or something they're protected but the lungs are inside there and in order for the lungs to expand you need to have a posture that allows that expansion. Now, have you ever tried to be very, very slouched over and you will notice that your ab muscles, i.e. your support, it's almost like you, you, you can't really do that, right? Even when you do a crunch, you need to use those muscles. You can't really be slouched over too much. And so having the center of gravity in the center is really important in order to have a deeper breath. Okay, um, so that's just a little lesson in posture and it's so important to fix this because if you don't fix posture and I see this over and over again, um, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm, reading, I'm, I'm reading the comments, which I shouldn't do because then it sidetracks me. Um, in order to have better tone, you you really have to fix your posture first and your breathing. It is your machine. It's it's the sound machine. Without air, there is no vibration of the vocal cords, and it's so important. A lot of times, just the posture alone, when you straighten up and you lift that chest and you open up, so that when you take a breath. It's nice and deep and you're using your support muscles to to control how you're exhaling the air while you're singing. That is a that is such a big must. When you are singing higher, you need much more subglottal compression, meaning the your support muscles there. It's like they're making that air stream very dense. And at the same time, your vocal cords are closed tightly. That has nothing to do with tension. Your vocal cords are closed tightly and there's just a little bit of air coming through. The higher you sing, the less air you need. It's not the opposite. You need less air when you sing high because the vocal cords come cl closer together. That also means that your support muscles work a lot harder when you're singing those high floaty pitches because you need just a little bit of air going through. And in order to control that, the problem often is that instead of a little bit of air, there's way too much air that is being pushed through the vocal cords that creates a lot of friction and tension and strain. And what do you do? You compensate by tensing your jaw oftentimes, which then results in the space, that placement to not be open and round anymore, but to be very cut off. So it's almost like it's a chain reaction that is triggered 
just by the fact that you are not having good posture and you're not breathing deeply and you are not controlling the exhalation um, with your support muscles. So that's why it is so extremely important to fix your posture and to pay attention to that when you sing. Here's what happens when something's hard. A lot of times this is tension goes here or here. And, you know, this is a, a popular one is like shifting the head forward or the shoulders are really tense and tight or the neck. Um, that Those are all signs that it's just very strained. And that is not going to aid that to uh, result in the top floaty pitch. So one more thing is, if you want to float the top pitch to where it sounds like it's easy, the truth is you don't even have to try to be loud when it's high. Just the fact that a pitch is high already automatically makes it sound louder. <laughs> and I always think of it like this, the high pitches are actually more relaxed when it comes to my vocal cords. I mean, they are more tense, but I'm not pushing anything at all. What I am doing is I'm just, I'm working hard on the level of my support. I'm holding on to the air that is inside of my body. I control it very much to where there's just a little bit of air going through and my vocal cords are closed very efficiently, not too tight, not too loose, very efficiently. And then Instead of, which I'm not even, I don't even want to demonstrate, instead of singing a high pitch and trying to be even louder, which, oh my goodness, that is the hardest thing. It's like, you don't have to. Instead of like, it's like, I, I, I can't even get higher because I, it's so tense and tight and narrow in there. Pushing harder is not going to help. Instead, what I want to focus on is that round space, that ah, okay? That ah space, good posture, take that deep breath. Now focus on that airstream to be very, very controlled. And then have a clean onset and only use as much air as necessary. And tr don't try to be loud. Try to actually, it's almost like you're relaxing on the top. And then it's more like, Yes, I said I'm going to look at the comments after I get through teaching, okay? So then instead of ah, I can go higher. It sounds more like So for example, in this aria, what is it? So it's like um, fr from Puccini's La Rondine, it's like So it's 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 just you know, and then it goes higher. Of course, it goes the second time around goes like. So it's basically, if you want to float those pitches, you just take it back a notch. And all you do is add vibrato. I haven't even warmed up at all today. <laughs> I always do this. Um, yes. So these are really important principles to not push when you, when you get higher. And the placement of the vowels are, is just so important. The rule is the higher the pitch, the more open the vowel needs to be. So... When I go to a high C, pretty much everything becomes an A ah because an E and an U, when it's more closed, it's just not singable anymore. So the progression is something like this, you know? I mean, an A ah stays an A, ah, but the progression is something like this. Ooh, when I go on an U, works that ooh it's much more closed when it's lower because I can shape an ooh there when I get higher 
I just want to focus on the openness because I need to give it space because we, I need to elongate that space in order to get that higher pitch out. It's almost like you want to think of this more and more vertical space, the higher you sing. So you need that space. And in order to get that, I need to adjust that vowel. Um, now in that song that I just, oh my goodness, I don't even have the sheet music. I haven't sung this in years, but it just came to mind. Oh, I don't think I have it. Oh, Kilbe Sonio, I have it. So I just looking up the words, <laughs> what they are. So it is, um, well, okay. So on that A, it says folle amore, folle amore. So on the A, it's a O, which is, it's, it's pretty singable. But see the O, if it were an octave lower, fa, when I go an octave higher here, that A needs to be even more open and it just gets a little bit closer to an A. Ah. So instead of fa, I just can't, I can't quite do it when it's too closed. So I need to de be much more open and it's more like fa. Also, it is a piano um, dynamic marking, so <laughs> I can't be loud. I have to be piano. If I go, it just sounds very brassy and it's not necessary. It's automatically um, has, you know, you want to add spin and the overtones and you need that round space, not the narrow space, the vertical round space. And you always want to try to, it's almost like you want to imagine you're sending the sound waves. It's almost like they're going through the back of your, like they're bouncing off the back of your head and then you're sending them out of your forehead. That's kind of how I picture it. That's what you want to do. You want to direct them there. What happens when you imagine that is that you're giving it so much more pharyngeal space to where you are adding a lot of overtones. What you want is all those structures here. You want as much vibration as possible. And every pitch and every vowel has its own frequency. So you want to hit those frequencies, the bright ones, and that only is possible by opening up more. So instead of that, we need to go. So, and by the way, also when it's, um, when it's low, we don't want to go potro, dear potro. I can tell you stories over stories where I was in a huge, like in a big concert hall and everyone else in rehearsal, in a small rehearsal room, when we practiced, they all sounded so much louder than me. <laughs> But it never failed when the actual concert happened and we were in a big space. And you would stand like uh, when they recorded anything, they always had the recording devices kind of a little bit at a distance, of course. And it never failed. You always heard my voice because I was on the top. It was already it, it just kind of stuck out automatically just because of the fact that I'm singing higher and I didn't have to try to be louder or just more voluminous. It is just, it's just the nature of singing high. It's, um, there's not much you have to do. Oh, I need to sing this aria again. It's just so beautiful. So, you know, why don't I take questions now? And um, after the questions, I just off the spot, maybe I could just like sing something for you guys. I will try. Any questions? And um, so now I'm looking at the chat again. There's no way I can, like there's so much depth and this is what we're actually going to talk about in the one month of opera class that I'm going to start next Monday. Um, again, if you want more information about it, bit.ly slash opera class. I don't do this often, 
once or twice a year for a one month and this time it's targeted specific specifically at sopranos what causes the voice to cut off when singing usually it's a lot of tension and the vocal cords stop vibrating when you when you when you're too tense probably this happens it's like it's it's just too much tension basically you don't give it space number one and second of all the airstream is not focused too much air not focused not enough subglottal compression and not enough control from your support muscle from your support muscles to have it's almost like you need to synchronize perfectly vocal cord closure and the airstream and then of course pair that with the openness oh you're well very welcome jillian so if there are any more questions let me go back if there are any questions here um how to sing high pitches in staccato mm. staccato is tricky for a lot of um, singers but it's a great exercise so here's what i hear a lot for my students when they do staccato so the onset is very sloppy it's very tense very tight what should happen is what you you really have to train your diaphragm and synchronize it perfectly with your vocal cord closure so you need to have that exact moment of vocal cords close airstream comes here's what happens a lot that's the first split split second the onset is instead of if that happens again same issue that we just talked about too much tension too much air it's not synchronized perfectly and you're not using your support muscles but what you're using for onset is uh, is this it's just this short diaphragmatic push of the air and you don't need too much you just need a little bit of air and you know if you can do this and this is actually a good exercise to also um fix that issue of the pitch not coming out on the top it's short staccato notes but light you want to be light you always want to think on the top don't push heavy light but focused not airy not breathy focused so it's it's really my support controls it but i'm not having huge pushes it's just tiny impulses What happens if you use the nasal sound for some pitches? Oh, wait a minute. There's another question by Jillian. Are there any specific exercises that would help? Um, yeah, like I just said, that that um, staccato exercise will help. Also, what I do a lot, you know, that's kind of advanced. But what I do a lot with my students is just to kind of have this light onset exercise. So you want to focus on your posture, your breathing. And then from the top of your breath, meaning fully inhaled, you want to have an onset that is light but focused, where you can synchronize the vocal cord closure and the air coming through. Ah, that's something you can do. Ah, ah. And then you just hold it just a bit longer on the top. So don't try to make it heavy, very light, but you can start with ah, 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 ah. If you hear the slightest bit of ah, this kind of sound, then too much tension. It's not perfectly synchronized. Hmm. Well, yeah, nasal sound. Nasal sound has a lot to do with your pharyngeal space you know when we talk about the soft palate we always talk about raising the soft palate it's not just the soft palate it's that entire space you know you can make all the shapes you want with you know starting with inside of your mouth with a tongue which then continues on more toward the back of your mouth there's the back of the tongue and then on the top is this what we call the soft palate and then even further than that you can't really see it from the outside uh, you could if you 
open the throat a lot when you go to your um ear nose and throat doctor he's like oh say ah and the reason why he says that is because he wants to look way back into your throat but if you say mm, and it's a nasal ah you're closing off the space and there's no openness uh, but, but the pharyngeal space it's like it's like everything that is like here in your throat area that determines how much nasal resonance is in the pitch so the more open the less nasal resonance sometimes we want to direct it to where there's just a little bit of nasality in it not a nasal sound but just a little bit of nasal resonance but what we don't want is like so i don't know it's not even singable it's really hard so here's the thing um in that in that piece right here the amore that's a nasal sound the m however it is nasal because I have to close my lips in order to make that sound. But what I can do, I still can keep my throat, that pharyngeal space and the inside of my mouth, I can keep it open. So what I want to do is enclose that open space, close my lips, yes, excuse me, but I want to keep space. That's, it's really hard to sing those nasal sounds like, really hard but it's like instead of which an m that is completely closed is really hard to sing but there's no other no that's the only nasal sound so you have nasal sounds naturally n and m those are naturally nasal sounds and in opera you just have to sing through them when i say sing through them means you have to try to keep the open space in the back of your throat then it, it'll it'll make those resonant also yeah forward and backward singing it's not singing it's the placement forward placement means you want the sound waves here and not here <laughs> like you know backward means you're just covering up the sound by So if I darken the vowels and if I kind of cover and cover with my lips, it, it can't ring bright. I'm not adding bright overtones, but I'm darkening it. So that's why it's so important to go th over vowel placement, which is something I'm going to work on, you know, one on one with everyone who is in my one month of opera class um, starting next Monday. Um, let me know if you're interested because I only have a couple of spat spots available and it's a one month long intensive class um, it doesn't matter if you're a complete beginner or if you've had lessons before or you're advanced it's really all it's always the same stuff you're just maybe on a different level with this stuff but we're always practicing the same things all the things that I was talking about you know the placement the vowel shapes the support the posture the airstream the vocal cord closure um, and being a better musician, definitely important. Okay, a couple more questions maybe, and then, yes, Jillian, you wanna check out my, um, the information page about the class. Um, by the way, for that class, oh, it's bit.ly slash um, opera class. And in that class, we're going to use the Marco Polo app. This is a video chat app, it's a free app, but we use, we're using that, and basically you're going to have me as um you know monday through wednesday we're actually doing like the chat back and forth you can have me as your personal coach you have like a one-on-one -on -one channel with me on marco polo where you can just talk to me and also we're going to have a group channel um that doesn't mean you know it doesn't matter what time zone you're at because we're going to chat with each other kind of like there's going to be a delay if I'm here as you're recording it, I'm going to see it. And if not, I'm going to see it like whenever I look at the app, I'm going to get a notification. And um, we also have a group channel, a group um, chat. That means you can connect with all the others in the group and share your progress and stay motivated and also just kind of, you know, encourage each other. I think that's really an important part. And like looking at others and how they're progressing. I've learned a lot that way. Okay, a couple questions. Um, how to best avoid tongue tension while singing? 
This is besides conscious effort in keeping it low in the lower teeth. Mm. In all of my experience in teaching over the years, it's always been best when I don't even say anything about the tongue. As soon as you try to do something with your tongue, it becomes unnatural and it's weird and it's tense and it's like, <laughs> lower your tongue. <laughs> it's a weird thing. I think what you should focus on is more the sound of the vowel, the actual, like the, the resonance of the vowel. You can hear a big difference between So focus on the sound of the vowel and if you if you are targeting the right shade of the vowel then your tongue will do automatically what it needs to do so um, let's assume when you speak you can create the right placement of like an open vowel like an ah uh. if you can do that when you speak you can also also do it when you sing and you should not focus so much i i've always found it that it just created more problems than it helped if i told a student like try to keep your tongue low and relaxed it just doesn't work it's almost like you're saying oh, try not to think anything like when you know <laughs> that's when i start thinking um, think of nothing like how is that possible <laughs> that moment is like oh, now i'm thinking that i should think of nothing it's just not possible um so it's a paradox you should not think of your tongue you should more think like try to feel how does it feel when i'm opening that vowel when it sounds like an ah and an ah oh, instead of an ah uh, and an ah uh. does that make sense oh can someone who has problems standing sing opera certainly certainly you don't have to stand up have you ever watched opera singers when they act, what they do sometimes? Like we had to do crazy stuff. I had to lie down and jump around and be like headstands. Not quite, but you could do headstands. That would be a little difficult, but theoretically you could do headstands and still sing opera. You can sing at the edge of a chair and as long it for singing, it's really only your upper body that's relevant. Your lower body does not do anything for singing. Now, of course, if you lock your knees or you're crooked, that, that will create tension in general in your body. So, but as you can sit at the edge of the chair and that's perfect to sing. I just, I, I really, I always hated choirs that made people stand up for like an hour and a half. That's just crazy. You can't stand up for that long. It just creates like tension and pain. <laughs> it's just like, you know, when you stand up, you got to move. That's okay. But when you just stand statically, ugh, that, I, I, I would hate that. So sitting at the edge of the chair, focusing on your upper body and lifting, you can still have really good posture and sing. I mean, orchestras, look at the flautists and the horn players and the trumpet players. They don't stand up. They sit and they need the same mechanisms, you know, with the air and the support that singers need. They would not stand up for hours in the orchestra. <sighs> I don't understand quite, I think. Mm. Oh, so many questions. Mm. Sorry, miss, I think the soprano voice six activities, actives, I don't understand. Can you rephrase? Not quite. why do we have to learn different language opera to learn classical singing can't we learn english repertoire yes you certainly can there are english opera operas and english pieces but here's my experience singing in various languages makes you so aware of the different sounds you can produce and singing in italian italian is just a great language to sing in because italian naturally has very open vowels that's why it's great to sing in english can sometimes be a challenge you know like an r like a like an actual r like in old english we would roll the r a lot of times in opera that's how it's done because it is more singable but english is a little bit challenging french is a little bit challenging usually more advanced singers would you know do french pieces 
because of the problem of you have to adjust the nasal sounds to where they still sound like the language, but you cannot make them as nasal as you would when you speak. And so English is great, but the best language to begin singing, to have really good habits is actually really Italian. Plus learning different languages and just singing different languages. It's almost like you're learning how to move all those parts inside of your mouth and your throat that you like you didn't even know how to move them before. But creating all these different sounds is actually kind of it's 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 important. It's like your tools that you need for singing in general. Yes, there is a link. Um, maybe I'll just type it out here. Bit.ly slash opera class. Well, looks like it's not a clickable link, but it's this is the link. If you paste that in your browser, this is my month long opera class. We start on Monday and um, one month until, you know, that's uh, November 14th until the class will run until um, December 13th. Now, because I only have a handful of spaces available, because I work one on one Monday through Wednesday, you have access to me via our Marco Polo chat app. That means it's just you and I and then whenever you want to share with a group, you can also share with a group. Uh, in addition to that, um, on Thursdays and or Fridays, I'm going to post lessons, you're going to have like a inside of the course, there's an actual going to be a course where I create lessons such as this one that you will have access to even after the class is over. So you can go back and have all those resources. Um, I did talk about the different time zones before. Since we're using the Marco Polo chat app and I don't have to be there at the same time. If anyone knows Voxer, it's a voice messaging app. It works the same way as Voxer, except it's a video. That means if you start recording a video, I get a notification on my phone. Now, if I happen to be on my phone right when you're going, when you're recording the message, I can just go ahead and watch and you are you might be 30 seconds into the message, but I'm going to watch it from the beginning as you're still recording. There's just a delay. If I'm not on my phone as you're recording it, I'm going to see it as soon as I look at my phone and I have time and then I will respond. Uh, respond. And we can do that Monday through Wednesday. The reason is because I want you to work on your own on those other days because this is when you're actually going to have a lot of breakthroughs. I'm going to help you fix because it's different for everyone. That's why it's really important for me to look at your voice and not just to get like right here. I can just tell you generally how to do it, but to help you to actually do it and help you to see what is it that you're doing wrong and how can you change the approach so that it will work for you. I will have to see you and hear you. There's like when you type out questions, I can only guess what the actual problem is. But when I see you and I can hear you and actually talk to you, I can tell you, well, try this and then show me if this is working for you and I'll show you something and then you can show me and then I can tell you if you're even doing it right. Because 99.9% .9 of the time exercises are not executed the correct way. That means you're not making full use of them. Um, make a page for Facebook. Um, I think it might be on Facebook already. We posted it. We also posted it on Instagram. There's a link also in my bio in Instagram. Um, Freya Casey Music is my handle on there. And by the way, if you have not, um, if you have tipped TikTok, if you're someone who does, who watches TikTok, I'm also on TikTok now, and we do short videos Monday through Friday. My daughter is like a TikTok addict. <laughs> She's 10 years old and she's like, she loves creating videos and it's just like, she does really funny stuff on there. She usually just makes them not public, but she just uses the app to, to create these and it's really funny. Okay, you know what? I actually wanted how many operas will we be learning? Well, we're going to work on some arias that are really great for beginner sopranos. And we're going to work on getting things right to really brush. You know, we I, I want to start with stuff that that will set you up for success. 
most likely in it in Italian aria. In the that, there's this songbook. It's called Twenty Four Italian Arias. Those are all really great for sopranos. And it could be that you are a mezzo. It could be that you are a soprano, like a full soprano. It it doesn't really matter. You know, you can do it in different keys. There's a medium low and a medium high version of this all, and um. I would rather go a mile deep than go a mile wide. Uh, does that make sense? So we're going to work on maybe one or two pieces, go really deep. Because everything we're going to work on, on that piece, is going to be applicable to like everything you ever do. So that's, you know, it's not about learning more songs. It's about doing it really well. And that's what we're, we could learn. We could work on one aria for months and for years. <laughs> That's how deep I want to go. Okay, now I, let's see, I'm going to, I'm thinking about what, what it is that I want to do. Okay, Let, let's actually try this, or no, let's, let's actually do Quando Men Vo. I'm gonna do that. That's one of my favorite arias. Puccini. Can I type now? Here we go. Okay, I'm going to try this now. I'm just going to sing something. And, uh, you know, because I think it's really important just to be inspired. Where am I? I'm a little confused now. I have all these windows. Okay, wait a minute. I was on YouTube here. Give me a thumbs up if you want to hear me sing an aria now. Because <laughs> I would just go ahead and close with that. I would sing an aria. And I hope this will, like with a microphone, I hope it doesn't cut out. I did turn on that, not, you know, turn off the noise, noise cancellation. It should work. Mm, yes, you can email me. You know, if you have any questions about the opera class, email me at info at masteryourvoice.tv. Um, I will definitely try to get back with you as soon as possible. Where's the piano? I don't know. Here's a piano and there's a piano back here. Oh, the type, the aria I'm going to sing is... Quando men vo Puccini, and it's from the opera La, La Boheme. That's what I'm going to do now. And I don't need any sheet music for that because I sung it a million zillion times. Okay, give me a thumbs up. Okay, give me more thumbs up if you want to when you hear me sing this aria. It's Puccini. La Boheme is one of the most beautiful arias ever. If you have not listened to La Boheme, you have to listen to it. Puccini is like, oh. <laughs> it's, it's, I don't know. It's like, it's schmaltzy, but it's so beautiful. Those harmonies. I love those. It's just rich and it's beautiful. All right. Thank you, Nana. That's enough thumbs to motivate me now. Let's, okay, I'm just gonna get started and I hope that the sound will be okay. I'm going to have, or wait, you know what? Actually, I'm not gonna have it off my computer. I'm gonna play the backing track. Ah, what is this? I'm gonna play the backing, what is going on? I'm gonna play the backing track right here from my tablet. I think that's more practical. There we go. By the way, if you're ever looking for a backing track, you know, first of all, of course, there are a lot of good ones right on YouTube and um, also on Spotify or wherever you have a subscription, a flat rate for music, you know, also on Amazon Music or what is it? YouTube Music also, right? Lots of really good, just put in the name of the piece that you're looking for and add kar karaoke and there are a lot of those there for free okay good now let me try to sing this but i'll probably have to back up from the microphone 
That's not the piece. It's 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 always this Google commercial. Okay, sorry, I had to turn it down. YouTube puts in commercials. Well, I have commercials in my videos also. Okay, here we go. Oh, it starts right away. Actually, that's one other point I wanted to make. <laughs> um, your warm-up regimen should be very much targeted at your voice type. So, you know, for me, I you never neglect any part of your range. You want to do the low, the middle, and the top. You want to do all of it, but what you... It's like someone's honking out there. It's like, um, you, you want to bring out, like, for example, I'm a color tour soprano. I will do a lot of like agility stuff. You know, for me, it's a lot of faster thing things. So like, um, I, I'll do color tours also in my warm up. Now, if you are more of a, Full lyric soprano, you might not do as much um, flexibility training. You do more of um, long lines training, which look, everyone needs to do everything. But really, it is, it's really important that your warm-up regimen, which I should definitely do before I sing stuff like that, <laughs> um, suits your voice type. Um, that's one other thing, of course, I can help you with if you were in my one month of opera class. I can't tell what your exact fach is, you know, because there are different types of sopranos. It's not just one type of soprano. There are like lyric sopranos, there are dramatic sopranos, there are soubrettes, which I'm a soubrette slash lyric coloratura. And uh, depending on... Oh, D Diana, you're a coloratura? Awesome. But even coloratura sopranos, you know, everyone always thinks like, well, do you sing the Queen of the Night? 
And I tell them, no, not really, because that's for a dramatic um, coloratura soprano. And I am not that. And it's not that I couldn't sing it. The, pro the, the thing is that you need to, like, the weight of your voice and the timbre of your voice is really relevant. And if you sing repertoire that is not respecting your voice type, um, you're, you're going to hurt yourself if you do a lot of that. So like, for example, Queen of the Night aria, it needs a lot of, it has this like darker color and that weight on the voice, which uh, that's not my voice. I have a lighter, brighter voice. So I'll sing more like the Inas and the Etas, you know, like the Zerbinetta and the Zerlina and the Pamina and um, the Adela and the, you know, all those lighter, brighter, sparkly stuff. Um, usually younger girls, like younger women, that's what I sing because I guess in operas that my voice type sings those because it's like, you know, it sounds youthful or something. The heavier voices usually play more of the maybe dramatic characters, you know. I hardly sing dramatic characters, always like the funny ones or the young ones, um, <laughs> the witty ones. The, those are the ones that I always sing. And that's why Queen of the Night is not one of, you know, it's not my aria that I would not sing that. Okay. Yes. And you know what? Singing lighter and brighter can be just beautiful too. And being a sabrette is, it, it's, it's not easy because you need the high stuff, but you also need the middle to low and it needs to still not sound dark or heavy, but it needs to sound uh, beautiful. You know, when you go toward... Oh, let's see if I can get this here real quick. Just an example. That's why I always say never neglect any part of your voice. You need to do the high and the low. Um, 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 um. Let me see if I have the, the sheet music in here. I hope I have it. Yes. Devieni non tardar. So this is Mozart. Um... So, you know, it has this It doesn't sound spectacular. There's nothing really extreme going on. But this is one of the hardest arias, I think, that exists because it's so exposed. And to sing this beautifully is hard. And there's this one part here. Finke. Am I still... Finché non splende in cielo torna face. So it's it goes all the way down to A3, which is crazy low for like a higher soprano. But in order, that's why you shouldn't neglect. As a soprano, you still have to go low, but you want to sing. You still want to have those bright overtones. And a lot of times you will be in the middle of your voice. Um, you will also go high, but a lot in the middle. And you need to have those, always the sparkle and the brightness in there and not It's not, that's, that's not Susanna. That does not sound like a Susanna. But the spin, you want to kind of connect to your head voice, although I need chest voice here because it is so low and make it sound consistent with the rest of your voice. Um, and again, this is like, I need to practice more again. I do so much different stuff and I, you know, really want to get more back into opera. Alrighty, I think I'm going to... Um, what arias are good for light coloratura? Well, I would actually start um, Mozart. Anything Mozart is actually good. I would not even start with arias. I would start with maybe even art songs. Handel is really good. Um, it depends on how good you are with the coloraturas already. Uh, like, for example, Mozart's Alleluia or Rejoice Greatly from Handel. Those are great arias. You have to stay light, otherwise you're not going to be fast. You have to be very light to be that agile. But also you have to be quite advanced in singing coloraturas because they move fast. But those are like some of my favorite arias. There's so much. Um, Handel and um, Mozart are just great. Alrighty, 
I think I'm going to wrap it up now. Again, if you want to join me in my opera class, one month of intensive training where I work with you one-on-one -on -one and in the group, a small group setting, um, help you float those top notes and I'll help you identify your exact voice type and what arias would be good for you. Um, look at the link bit.ly slash opera class. We start on Monday. Uh, that is November 14th. And it runs until December 13th. So just in time before Christmas, if you still want to practice something, we don't even have to sing arias. We could even sing art songs, but anything that targets this direction to, you know, to help you open up your voice, to brighten it, to where you have those bright overtones singing into your mask, opening those vowels, placing them to where they're brilliant and there's spin in your voice to where you don't have to work hard here. This is what we want to avoid. Not working hard here on that level, but here <laughs> and like opening the space. That's where you work hard. Those vocal cords are delicate. You want to be easy on them. Okay. That doesn't mean it's not hard work. It is hard physical work. Whew. Okay. Let me get my last drink of coffee. And that my friends means I have to wrap it up. I have no more coffee. I used to be not a coffee drinker, drinker at all. But since my twin babies were born last January, I just, it saved my life <laughs> pretty much. Oh, like last night was a little, until four o'clock, everything was just fine and dandy. And then our little baby girl, she got restless and she's had, oh, it's horrible right now. She has, she has, um, the worst diaper rash and she's had a little bit of diarrhea for the past couple of days and that means that it makes her diaper rash so much worse and it, it was horrible like yesterday it was horrible I just called the pediatrician today and he you know he gave me a prescription I'm about to go to the um, pharmacy and pick it up it's it's really bad and so our baby girl like I pretty much ha did not sleep after four so I slept from 11 to 4, 5 hours almost. But between that, I was awake a few times also because they wanted to drink milk. Um, basically, they sleep most of the time nowadays, but um, it is, you know, ah, I'm so in love. I'm just so in love with my babies. And that's why, you know, that's why I'm doing everything I'm doing nowadays. I'm doing it for my babies. Yes, I'm doing this for my babies. You know, um. I want to do well. I want to be a great example. And now I, I have so much fun. I have a babysitter now who comes in the mornings now from eight to one. And I have to be very focused. Like, what do I do with that time? You know, I, I don't have tons of time. I literally have like three to four hours where I can actually focus and really get my work done. And it's so much fun for me to actually decide like, what is relevant this week? What do I want to get done? And um, yeah. Right now, my priority is my opera class that will start on Monday. And I'm very excited. The people who have signed up so far, I'm already in touch with them via our Marco Polo app. And like, I'm very excited to start like hear everyone's voice and to some of them I've worked with already before, but it's so exciting for me to hear a new voice and to kind of like, I always have this vision for someone's voice when I hear it. It's like, ooh, I hear those frequencies that are like, they are wanting to come out, but maybe just need some tweaking. That excites me. Oh, thank you so much, Diana. <laughs> well, maybe, oh, I'm sorry about your autistic baby. Um, you know, babies are just, if you have kids, you know what I mean. It's just, babies are addicting. They are so much work, but they're also like so much joy. It's just nothing, nothing, absolutely nothing compares to just looking at your children. And then, you know, when you have two babies at once, it's it's a little crazy sometimes, but also it's double the joy. It's like when both of them in the, oh, in the morning when they both wake up and, you know, they just slept and they, they're rested and they're happy and they smile at me and they interact. And, you know, now they're nine and a half months. Now, when I do this, like, come on, come on, they reach out and they go like this. It's just the sweetest thing. So thank you all. It's been an hour, so I'm going to wrap it up now. And everyone, uh, you can always watch this again. It's going to be here on YouTube. And I believe I also streamed this to Facebook. I believe <laughs> I'm using a third party software. 
I'm using Zoom, then streaming it to Restream, and then that streams to supposedly Facebook and YouTube. Let's see if that all worked. I'm going to check out my Facebook page. Thank you guys and ladies, um, probably mainly ladies this time because the title says it is for sopranos, um, which also applies for counter tenors, by the way, because they sing as a soprano. I love you all. I hope you will just sing your heart out. Don't damage your voice, protect your voice and try to just lighten up on those vocal cords to where you don't really strain them too much. Oh, thank you, Diana, for your in, you know, like, for sharing that. Thanks. Have a great day, and I, you know, I hope to hear from you if you're interested in my opera class. Info at masteryvoice.tv. I will answer the email personally. Okay. Bye, everyone.